okay? So the first thing I'm gonna start with, because everyone is going to wonder what the hell are the pros and cons of going strap and punch. So we're gonna start with the cons. Uh, you have less stability with one of these. I'm holding a punch shield so you guys know. Uh, so yeah, less stability. So that means it's easier to maneuver. Someone who decides to maneuver it, hit it with their sword, it, it moves around more. Uh, it also means that you can fall to feints a lot easier. When you're using a strap shield, you're technically, not technically, usually you're pretty sturdy and you're trusting your shield to be there and you're just kind of defending. So when someone's feinting or faking an attack, you're kind of there. But if someone is faking an attack with this, especially when you're newer at it, you tend to want to move it. Right? And if someone fakes up high and you move up high and they hit you low, as some of you guys have all, well, a lot of you guys have experienced me doing, um, it's disadvantageous to have a punch shield in that retrospect. Which also means there's a higher learning curve to using a punch shield. Because you can still have the stability as you, you do a, a strap, but you have to teach your body to do it more with the front part of your arm instead of your full arm kind of just attached to your body. All right, so it's a little bit more of a learning curve in that, in that retrospect. Um, another con is it has different coverage for your static defense. Does anyone know what I mean by static defense? Anyone don't know what I mean by static defense? Static defense is your defense when you're static, when you're not moving, when you have a, a shield, a strap shield, it'll be a static defense like this. When you have a punch shield, you'll notice that your elbow's a bit more out, or you might have more of a static defense punched out this way, which reduces your offense if it's out, but increases your defense from the phone's attack. So that's your static defense. So it's a little bit harder to build a static defense. So there's your cons. For your pros, with a punch shield, you have more offensive capability than using a strap shield. Why is that? That's because you can move. Move the shield around more than you can with the strap shield. All right. Um, and then you have more, technically, you have more defensive potential too. Static defense may not be as high because you tend to move, but you have more potential to put your punch in places that defend that you can't do with a strap shield. Okay? So going into uh, offensive potential, let's start with that. Uh, because I'm done with the cons, I'm done with telling you what's going on. Um, so offensive potential. So right now what I have here is if you move your shield in areas that allow for different angles of attack, that strap doesn't allow you to do so easily. So if you want to just grab your shield, you can grab your strap. That way we can kind of compare. <clears throat> so we'll use a smaller one because it's easier to emphasize a smaller one. When you get bigger, it's harder to move in certain spots. But a shot on a, on a strap shield, this side is often open on them, all right? So if I want to strap over here, it's usually there. Now, if he wants to block that with a strap shield, right? But if I'm really deep, it's really difficult. If I really want to swing over here, especially if I'm left-handed, right? He really has to move that, and I can just get in and still swing there. Um, now, if he wants to do the same on me, sorry, one thing I'll point out, when he does this, when he blocks over here, he gets in the way of his sword too. All right? Advantage of a punch, if he wants to strike here, all my movement, <laughs> right? More offense. So I can open this up and reach if I want to. Right, so these, these swings that you want, if you want to go for someone's back, and if you have a strap shield, if you want to go in, this, this is still kind of open. But you can give that to them, put it here, and still strike to their back. Right? You can do that in multiple ways. If you go low like this, right, and he wants to string up high, you can pop here too. There's different ways you can do it. Um, but the thing is, you can now move this in different angles, so you can open up attacks that are easier. Right? So one thing about moving it is that it allows you to attack more. When you have a strap shield, and this is the strap shield, and it's up to my arm, if I want to attack over on this side, the strap is kind of in the way, 
I can drop it a little bit, but for to be able to move this anywhere I want, I can get more angles of attack that I need to attack. So if he's got a good defense, all right, and I want to say swing at, let's say, uh, let's say this leg here. We'll just say leg. All right. If I have the shield here, this is all I can do. Basically, this is the only way I can attack. All right, I can lift it up and attack this way. All right, but this, because it's a, a center, center strap, I can punch out here, completely stop anything that he wants to do up there, and swing where I want on the lower quadrant. All of a sudden, I have no, nothing stopping me here. All right, so I can attack anywhere on the lower quadrant that I want if I can punch up here and stop this sword at the top. Does that make sense to everyone? All right, so the reason why there's more offensive potential is because you can move it out of the way of your sword. The bigger your equipment for shield, the less offensive potential you have because you have to reach and open yourself up to get angles of attack. You can use this now to move out of the way or move it in positions that allow you to attack more. All right. I wanted to note one of the because we do a lot of, of more spin shots in that guard than in other groups. Um, when you have a punch shield, there's a different coverage area. Because your arm is not like this, when you use it to put it on your back, it's a different coverage area. So you have to make sure that you put it in the right area to cover your full back. So if I wanted to throw a spin shot, right? I gotta make sure I, I put it where I need it to be. So you have to be wary of where your shield is going to be versus a strap shield. So make sure you kind of know where that is. Because yes, you can still throw a spin shot with a strap. You can do it too, right? Now do it slower. <laughs> cool. So you can see his arm just goes there. If I, if I did the same thing with my arm, you'd probably see a bit more of an opening. So you just got to make sure you put it at areas and be more conscious of what you're doing. Uh, okay, so now we're going to go into defensive potential. So this is for angles of defense using, your, using the cone of defense. Okay? So we'll just use a small one to be more obvious. Um, right, small shield. Now up against you as a strap, whatever you'd see, you see openings in my body. You can all see that openings in the body. You can probably see my shoulder up there, shoulder here, right? Now, if you look at this and using a cone of defense, which is a cone, right? Obviously the other way. If I do this, you see a lot less in my body, right? So there's that whole area here where there's a little, you're using angles to stop people from hitting your body, right? So that's an advantage of using a punch shield. Of course, this is really tired. Keeping it out all the time, this is probably the ultimate defense. Same size freaking thing like this. If I just stay like this, I could probably defend everything, but then again, I can't attack, right? This is why now it gets in the way of my attacking. But if you just want to sit here and defend and have a strong arm and you hold a freaking shield that's whatever, wait forever, then yeah. <laughs> then you could just sit here defending like this all the time. Um, but the, the point of the cone of defense is that when you see someone attacking, instead of sitting here and taking it like a strap shield would, you can increase your defense just by punching out half a foot. So if you just punch out half a foot, as he's attacking, you're, you're deflecting the sword away. And so if he's coming in for attack up here normally, this is what they expect, but if you punch it, they get kind of jarred, and then they're out of position, all right? So using that cone of defense, bringing it out and punching a sword out of the way allows for better counterattacks. Um, using the defense to, uh, well, use the heat for, he's gonna be attacking me here. Uh, you, yeah, it doesn't matter, I guess, what you see. So if I, no, I should use a strap, that would be a lot easier. So we have wrap shots, and right now I won't be able to hit it on him, but, if I go for a wrap shot for a shoulder, 
I'm kind of reaching. All right, so I'm opening up here. So a lot of people will counter that. Right, so this is this is the counter, hit the arm. Typically they'll counter that. That's the easiest way. We, we, we call that if you you reach, I teach. Alright, so you can kind of expect that from people if they're expecting you to teach you if you're reaching with a punch shield, you can put that there. Alright? If you're expecting it, you can come back with it. So if you do anything that opens up your arm and you expect to counterattack, it allows you to finish off your combos more. So if my combo is to go up here and play, then I make sure I put that there as defense so I can continue my combo. If I didn't do that, right, I'm not there. I, I'm getting this here. <laughs> so I mean, you can do that with the strap, but you only cover a certain amount or else you're really reaching out to, to cover that, which is tough. Um, so by using the, your, your cone of defense and your angles of defense with your shield, you can predict where they're going to counter so you can finish combos, all right? And by sticking it out here, I can come in whatever, if I need to keep swinging. Um, I've already got him at that point. Um, so that's how you can do combos using angles of defense. Um, um, so when you're defending against feints, so for those that don't know what a feint is, it's a partial attack. And it's an attack that is interrupted just to cause a reaction. Okay? So if I were to faint against him, yeah, exactly. So if he, he goes to faint here, I might do this. Right? I'm, I'm trying to cause a repick. He's going for a wrap shot. He just wants to stop it halfway just so I move my shield up here so he can quickly do something else. Right? Um, so to defend against that using the shield is the same as I was talking about before. Instead of using the reaction time that you would use as a strap, which is to do this, you should train yourself to punch your, your shield out. Because the reaction for attacking down here and up here can both be blocked just by punching out. Does that make sense, everyone? Now, if he wants to go low or high, all right? So if you can get the train in your mind that that feints are still attacks and just use that angle to defend two different locations, you can do that too. Um, this is less obvious with a smaller punch. You have to punch out further, but you can still do it. Alright. Um, when you use smaller shields, you tend to be needing it to be more offensive. So. Um, what you want to be doing when you're using a smaller punch is baiting. For anyone that doesn't know what baiting is, it's creating an opening, expecting your opponent to attack at that opening. So if I, if I were like this, and I did this, he wants to attack there, right? So by doing that, I would put it here, and pop it up. So it's just creating an opening to counterattack where you, you expect him to go. It's, Fighting is very much a chess game for everyone. If you can really read your opponent, you can predict where to attack next and get and hit them. Um, any questions I want to have? I know that was a pretty short class, but any questions on punch shields? I'll make sure I went through everything I can think of. <clears throat> if you're now, we're going to go into a little bit of footwork here with the punch shield, so he comes here. All right, um, so looking at the same angles of, uh, of defense, if you're using footwork and moving this way, you can still punch that out instead of keeping it to your body and twisting your body a little bit if you're trying to protect this side. It gives you the ability to do a lateral movement, punch it out a little bit, and still swing where you want to swing. So make sure that wherever you move, 
you move differently using a punch shield because you want to kind of stick it out a little bit to where you want to go because that's to stop your to stop whatever openings because if I'm moving this way on him there's more openings on this side right if I'm moving this way on him I can kind of put it over here right you can stick it out so if I'm moving this way I can pop it this way and hit here or this way um, so again, these are all kind of things you can do with punch shield. Uh, there's a lot more, but just basically you have to keep in mind that you want to use this back and forth. Your whole, uh, the, the whole idea of using a punch shield is the ability to move it in areas to block your angles that are going to hit you. Or to move it out so you can attack angles that the opponent doesn't expect you to be able to hit. All right, be able to do this. Attack here is not something you can do with a, a punch, uh, a strap shield. So it gives you different angles. Yeah, you strap there, you can't do this. <laughs> and then you get the same size shield. All right, so you just gotta keep in mind that yes, it's easier for your opponent to make it, to move it out of the way for you. But if you control your shield and you control the fight, then you should be able to use your punch shield in a more advantageous way for offense and defense. All right, no questions? All right, let's fight. You guys can get the shield. Yeah. Yeah.